Hi, this is Ryan and my call sign is November November 7 Mike and this is what it sounds like in Morse code. This is the start of requirement 3, which is the electromagnetic spectrum. If you want to learn about radio, there are a few things you need to learn before anything else. The idea of frequency is one we'll talk about first. As we've shown earlier, even though we can't see radio waves, we often draw them as ripples like these on the screen. We also have seen that radio waves travel. They're always in motion. If we timed the waves you see on the screen, they would end up taking one second to move from the left vertical yellow line to the right vertical yellow line. We say that the single sweep of the top wave shown is traveling one cycle per second. In radio talk, we give a name to cycle per second. We call it Hertz, named after an old guy who is a radio pioneer. In this instance, one Hertz. If nine cycles go by in one second, we would call that frequency nine Hertz. What would we call it if a thousand cycles passed by in one second? How about one million, seven million, or a billion? Now let's talk about wavelength. Radio waves have certain lengths, and it's very important to understand this. For starters, you can see that peaks and valleys of these two radio waves are, spa are, are spaced differently. We call the distance between two successive peaks the wavelength of the radio wave. Notice that the wavelength of the top wave is longer than that of the lower wave. The wavelength of the bottom is one-third that of the top. You can see that three successive peaks fit in the same space as one above. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. One interesting thing is that with longer wavelengths and lower frequencies, the amount of energy in the radio wave is lower too. Shorter wavelengths result in higher frequencies. And just the opposite of longer waves, shorter wavelengths present much higher energy. That's why we call them microwaves in a microwave oven can heat food. What would the wavelength be for 1 hertz? It's 186,000 miles. 10 hertz is 18,600 miles. What about 100 hertz? That is 1,860 miles. Radio frequencies are divided into ranges based on how these frequencies behave in nature. We don't have time to talk about all of the frequency ranges, but let's look at a few that relate to some common radio signals. MF stands for medium frequency. This is the group where you'll find AM radio, marine radio, and some ham radio bands. HF is high frequency. This group of frequencies is used for shortwave broadcasting. Ham radio operators use HF for most international communication. VHF is very high frequency. These frequencies are used for local communication such as broadcast TV, FM entertainment radio, business, and ham radio. These frequencies and higher are the ones that operate line of sight. UHF is ultra high frequency used by police, cell phones, and ham radio. FRS radio, so-called talkabouts, lies in this group too. Look closely at this chart. It shows that MF, or medium frequency, includes frequencies from 300 kilohertz up to 3 megahertz. That's how many of those individual peaks and valleys, or cycles, go by in one second. As we move through each level, 
we can see that frequencies increase tenfold. Here again, we show the four frequency groups from the last slide. There are many more frequency groups we're not going to talk about, but they create an interesting scientific picture of frequencies. These frequencies are listed from top to bottom, low to high. That may be confusing, but it's how radio experts map out these ranges. There are five groups of frequencies lower than the four we've been studying. Some are used for very specialized communication, such as submarines. And there has been some ham radio work in the low frequency group, or LF. The most fascinating point here is that some of these waves travel very well through solid material, like the Earth. There are three frequency groups higher than our four. These are very fascinating for many ham radio experimenters and scientists and include satellite, radar, x-rays, and beyond. It even includes light. But overall, our group of four is what's important to the vast majority of ham radio operators. Now, let's look closer at our four groups, starting with medium frequencies. Remember the FCC? The FCC assigns a large portion of the bottom end of the medium frequency range for use by AM radio stations. These days, most people listen to AM radio for sports, news, and political talk radio. Most of the time, they listen in their cars. At the top end of the range, we have frequencies set aside for marine frequencies. The Coast Guard monitors these frequencies for boaters who might be in trouble. Big ships even use these frequencies. Right in the middle of the medium frequency range is a space set aside for ham radio. From now on, we'll show ham radio frequencies in red with white lettering. Note that hams call this the 160 meter band. Why do you suppose it's called the 160 meter band? We often refer to bands by their appropriate wavelength for these frequencies. Their wavelength is about 160 meters, just over 500 feet between peaks. Next comes the high frequency, or HF band, as radio operators call them. There's a lot we're not showing here, but we are showing that ham radio has lots of bands throughout this range. You can also see what I've I, that I have identified each of the ham radio segments by their approximate wavelengths. How many of you have heard of CB radio? What do you know about it? It used to be very popular, but now it's pretty much used by truckers when they're out on the highway. For now, that's as far as we'll go with the high frequency group. Next comes very high frequencies or VHF. This is the first frequency group that requires line of sight transmission. That's why the type of communication is usually close in or the transmitting towers for it are always located as high as possible in the immediate area. Before cable TV, one of the most important VHF transmission was for television. This broadcasting still takes place, but cable TV has become more popular. The radio in cars usually has this FM band. While satellite radio has grown in recent years, many still listen to FM on their car radios and sometimes even at home. Aircraft pilots communicate with air traffic control in this band of VHF frequencies. VHF high and VHF low are bands assigned to business and other privately licensed communications. This little silver band, or the, the little band of silver is for weather announcements, usually by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. 
and of course there are ham radio bands in there as well. You can see the popular uh, two meter band right in the middle of the, the red rectangles and uh, on the low end is six meters and uh, high on the higher end is 1.25 meters. Now for ultra high frequencies or UHF. Starting off there are some TV frequencies in this UHF group to add to the prior VHF group. Now we have the frequencies used for mobile and uh, cell phones. It used to be that a general purpose radio receiver could listen in on these frequencies, but for privacy, the FCC started requiring that manufacturers block the radio so that you can't buy a radio anymore that can just listen in on these private phone calls. Just like the other frequency groups, there are ham radio bands. We call them allocations throughout the UHF group. How many of you have used an FRS radio? The frequencies these radios use are in this UHF group. As we've said earlier, just because there are blank spaces between the frequencies I've shown doesn't mean they aren't used. We just wanted to show some of the uses for these frequencies. I want to share one more little detail with you. Do you remember our discussion about WWV? It was that signal we played for you in a previous video. You can see that WWV is located at many locations in the medium frequency and high frequency bands. Because there are the world because these are the worldwide shortwave frequencies. Not only does WWV give you accurate time, but it also can let you know how well various radio frequencies are traveling on any given day since they do vary. That's as much of the various assigned frequencies that I'll show. I don't want you to total I don't want to totally blow you away with everything that is assigned to just these four frequency groups. So now you may want to pause the video and use this uh, image to finish your electromagnetic spectrum charts uh, for your requirement.